Everton were handed the heaviest points punishment in Premier League history earlier this season for breaching the league's profit and sustainability rules. Following their 10 point deduction, Sean Dyche's men have put together some fantastic results to move themselves out of the relegation zone. But is it as easy to do the same thing in Football Manager? I will take charge of Everton for the next five seasons to see if I can bounce this club back to the top of the Premier League. Starting the save, the Premier League table looks bleak reading and we will have an uphill task this season. But the points deduction is only for season one. One thing that is in Everton's favour is the fact that they already have a relatively decent squad. My main goal will be keeping Dominic Calvert-Lewin fit as I think he could be a real X factor for us. And as we're using a real world database, we have these six players joining, which includes striker Beto, who I think can be a real handful alongside DCL. But it wouldn't be an Everton rebuild unless we played a 4-4-2, so I'll be rocking GYR's Groot tactic for today's video. With the 10 point deduction, the board is expecting me to fight against relegation and we're predicted to finish 19th in the table. So this is gonna be a struggle. Guys, I have no other way of saying this. Season one was absolutely remarkable. We started the Premier League campaign phenomenally well, going on an unbeaten run all the way into November. And this was largely down to the form of two men. Dominic Calvert-Lewin stayed injury-free for the whole season and returned 34 goals in 42 appearances in all competitions. And Dwight McNeil provided 23 goals and 18 assists from the left midfield position. So coming to the end of the Premier League season, we managed to climb into the top four, finishing on 73 points, meaning we will be playing Champions League football next season. However, even without the points deduction, we would still be 10 points adrift of Manchester City. But to be honest, I can't believe what's happened here. In the domestic cups, we progressed through the third round of the FA Cup with a 4-2 win against championship side Leeds before getting slapped in the fourth round at home to Crystal Palace. In the Carabao Cup, we advanced past lower league opposition before coming up against Manchester City in the third round. The game was at Goodison and after a 2-2 draw, the tie will be settled via a penalty shootout. Julian Alvarez saw his first penalty saved for Manchester City by Jordan Pickford and after that, the penalties kept flying flying in, giving Dwight McNeil the chance to send us into the next round, which he did, sending Ortega the wrong way. This set up a quarter-final tie against Bournemouth, and this was much more straightforward, with us running out 4-1 winners at home and progressing into the semi-finals. We got a little lucky with the draw as we were handed championship side Leeds United over two legs. The first game was at home and both sides exchanged goals with the game ending in a 2-2 draw. Back at Goodison, despite Leeds taking the lead, we managed to battle back with goals from Danjuma and a brace from DCL, meaning we would advance to the final at Wembley to take on Arsenal. We took the lead in the game through Dwight McNeil and Calvert-Lewin made it 2-0 from the spot just before the hour mark. Arsenal pulled a goal back through ML Smith row, but as they pushed for an equaliser, we caught them on the counter with a goal from James Garner, and DCL added the exclamation point with yet another penalty. Yes, I can't believe it either. A top four finish and the trophy in season one. I am in absolute dreamland. Next season, we won't have any points deduction, so I'm expecting big things considering we have £36 million to spend. However, we are currently failing Champions League FFP, so I'm going to have some work to do here. This summer, we didn't sell any players, but we did release eight players, which would see us save a packet in wages, including saying goodbye to Ashley Young, Deli Ali and Adrissa Gay. On the incoming side of things, we tried to be sensible in this window, so spent just under £23 million on four players, along with two loans and one free transfer signing. Firstly, Gianluca Gaetano joined from Napoli for £1.5 million, and he was followed in swiftly by Brian Zaragoza from Granada for £12 million. We also picked up young Ghanaian international Abdul Fatou from Sporting for £5 million, along with Barcelona duo Chadi Riyad and Mika Faye on loan for the season. And finally, the free transfer. And this one is a little bit of a punt as I've signed Anthony Martial following his contract expiring at Manchester United. But don't worry guys, there's no Ballon d'Or clause here. We are also waiting for three other players to join us as Eduardo Bovi, Uros Rashic and Mohamed Diamande all deliberate the contract offers we've given them 
or are awaiting decisions on work permits. Going into this season, three of those summer signings make it straight into our best 11, but I'd say we're lacking a little bit at centre-back. This season will mark Everton's return to the Champions League following a 17-season absence. And with no points deductions this season, we're predicted to finish 11th in the Premier League, so let's see if we can match last season's four. After a domestic cup win last season, this year we weren't able to follow things up with another cup trophy. We got bounced immediately in a poor defence of our Carabao Cup by Brentford in the third round, losing on penalties at Goodison. And in the FA Cup, we smashed non-league Maidenhead in the third round before losing 4-1 at home to still championship side Leicester City, shipping four goals from the 70th minute onwards. In the Premier League, we were largely consistent in picking up wins against the teams that we should have beaten, but taking L's against some of the league's bigger sides. However, we still clinched a consecutive fourth place finish, finishing above the likes of Liverpool and Manchester United and Chelsea. And it looked like the gamble with Martial paid off as he finished second in the Golden Boot race behind Arsenal's Victor Osserman. And finally, we have our return to the Champions League. We entered in the league phase where we were drawn alongside Austria Vienna, PSV, Inter Milan, Dortmund, Malmo, Young Boys, PSG and Barcelona. We picked up some outstanding results in the league phase, even beating Inter Milan and Barcelona both at Goodison. Those results meant that we finished 10th in the table alongside Liverpool and would have to play in the knockout playoff round where we would face German side RB Leipzig. The first leg was in Germany where we opened up a nice 2-0 lead in the tie thanks to goals from Martial and Bovi. Back on Merseyside, we extended that lead through Dwight McNeil and Lewis Dobbin. Leipzig pulled a goal back, but Dobbin was on hand to restore the two-goal advantage just minutes later. In the round of 16, we were drawn alongside Portuguese champions Benfica, and we fired out a statement of intent with the first leg at Goodison. Benfica opened the scoring in the fifth minute, though, through Wunderkind João Neves, but then we turned into prime Barcelona and handed out a whooping to score five unanswered goals. However, the second leg in Lisbon was less emphatic as Benfica really came back at us scoring three goals, but we managed to hang on to win the tie 5-4 on aggregate. Into the quarterfinals we went where we would take on Napoli. This time we were in Naples for the first leg, but again, we were superb, dominating the Italian side from the first minute to run out 5-1 winners on the night. In the second leg, Napoli pushed to get back into the tie, but were only able to score a single goal with us progressing 5-2 on aggregate. That set up a semi-final tie with 14-time champions Real Madrid. The first leg was at the Bernabeu where both sides played out a 0-0 draw and backing Liverpool, Beto scored the only goal of the game to send us into the Champions League final. Yeah, I can't quite believe it either. It would be PSG in the final and they were looking to go back to back in the Champions League having won it last season. However, we had other ideas as Ben Godfrey jumped high to not home the only goal of the game from a Dwight McNeil free kick to see us spectacularly win the Champions League. So a top four finish and a Champions League trophy inside two seasons. Everton fans, would you take that? We've got another £60 million in the transfer kitty to try and take our shot at the Premier League next season. This summer, we had one huge outgoing as striker Beto left for Aston Villa for a whopping £52 million, which allowed me to go on a little bit of a spending spree. Firstly, we signed Portuguese left-back Leonardo Lello from Casapia for £6.5 million, and we followed that up with the permanent signing of Chadi Riad for £15 million after his loan last season. Next through the door was defender Anel Amethlozic, who came in from Sheffield United for £5 million cash and Amadou Anana. We also signed Norwegian wonder kids Sevi Helseth Nipan for £6.75 million, Ben Johnson from West Ham for £14 million, Luca Ranieri from Fiorentina for £24.5 million, and Bilal El Cajunas for £23 million. And finally, we picked up another free transfer signing in 33 year old Callum Wilson, who comes in following his contract ending at Newcastle. With these additions, we've fixed our problems in defence and have added more depth than we've ever had before. After last season's Champions League win, we add the Super Cup to our schedule where we will take on Arsenal, who are now managed by Unai Emery 
for a second time. Good evening. And this season sees us move into our new stadium at Bramley Moor Dock. Exciting times ahead for this club. We kicked off the season with the Super Cup where we dominated the game, but João Mario fired home the only goal of the game on the stroke of half time. In the Carabao Cup, we crashed out in the first game yet again, this time with a 3-1 loss on the road to Brighton. And in the FA Cup, we progressed through the earlier rounds with wins against Huddersfield, Nottingham Forest and Coventry, only to come up against Manchester City in the quarterfinals. DCL opened the scoring for us, but his goal was cancelled out by Erling Haaland shortly after. The game went to extra time where we took the lead again, this time through Anthony Martial, only to see Haaland pull City level for a second time. And just before the end of the first half of extra time, Matthias Nunes fired home the decisive goal to send City into the semi-finals. In the Premier League, we opened our campaign with a loss away to Chelsea, but then followed it up with 15 wins in a row to really show that we meant business this season. We were really smashing everyone this season, and it was largely down to the goal-scoring exploits of Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Anthony Martial, as they had 53 Premier League goals between them. Our form in the second half of the season was a little bit more patchy, but results in the first half saw us finish with 26 wins from our 38 games to be crowned Premier League champions. This was a crazy season as Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea and Newcastle all finished outside of the European places as West Ham, Spurs and Aston Villa will join ourselves and Manchester City in the Champions League next season. And speaking of the Champions League, we were drawn in the league phase alongside Rapid Bucharesti, PSV, Real Madrid, Juventus, Athletic Bilbao, Lazio, Bayern Munich and RB Leipzig. Our results were very impressive in the league phase, winning every game apart from two, which saw us finish on 19 points and third in the league phase table to head straight into the round of 16. The draw came and went and we were drawn alongside Lazio, a team who we beat in the league phase, so I was pretty confident here. The first leg was in Rome and we opened the scoring early, but that was cancelled out by Luis Alberto. In the second half, we were awarded a penalty, which Leonardo Lello dispatched to give us a 2-1 lead to take into the second leg. Back home, this was much more comfortable as we ran riot on Lazio, scoring five goals to win the tie 7-1 on aggregate. This set up a quarter-final tie with Dortmund, Dortmund, where we go to face the yellow wall in the first leg. Sebastian Haller opened the scoring from the spot, but Anthony Martial was able to cancel that out, turning the ball home after a little bit of pinball in the penalty area. However, deep into injury time, Dortmund struck again through Julian Brandt to give us a task back on Merseyside. In this game, we gave away another penalty early, but this time Jordan Pickford guessed right to deny Sebastian Haller. That save gave us the confidence to push on, and Nathan Patterson pulled the tie level on aggregate, and Dwight McNeil was able to send us into the semi-finals with a neat finish after some lovely movement. The semi-finals set up a replay of last year's final as we would take on PSG. We were in Paris for the first leg and we started like a house on fire, netting three early goals. PSG got a goal back with Mbappe scoring a scrappy one before James Garner fired off a thunderbolt to make it 4-1. Marco Asensio pulled another goal back in injury time, but I'd have bitten your arm off for this lead after the away leg. The second leg was equally as crazy, with goals flying in left and right for both sides, even with Bukayo Saka getting a goal for PSG. However, the scoreline was the same, with us advancing to the final for a second successive season, where we would take on Harry Kane and Bayern Munich. I had to mention Harry Kane, because he was on fire in this game, as he netted a hat-trick in a really disappointing game for us as we slumped to an embarrassing 6-0 defeat in the final. But this is still a remarkable season considering the situation Everton are in right now in real life and this summer in game we will have a transfer budget of 63 million pounds to try and take this team to the next level. I am going to label this summer transfer window as the summer of Saudi. In our outgoings, James Tarkowski joined Al Shabab for £5 million and Vitaly Molienko joined Al Riyad on a free transfer. And on the incoming side of things, we picked up a few veteran players, all from Saudi Arabia, on free transfers. From Al Ali, we secured Frank Kessie, and from Al Hilal, we picked up Sergi Malinkovic Savic to bolster our midfield. 
and signings from Al Nasser improved us at both ends of the pitch as we picked up former Manchester City defender Imeric Laporte and up front we brought Romelu Lukaku back to the club for a second spell as other than Anderlecht, this is where he spent the longest in his career at a single club. However, it wouldn't be a hood rebuild without cracking out the wonder kid finder as Chinese international central midfielder Ding Kai, Egyptian international winger Hossam Arafat and Danish youth international Lassie Valleys joined the club for a combined £10.5 million. Our Saudi additions improve us as all four break into our best 11 and the addition of Lukaku allows McNeil to move back into the midfield. This season we swap the UEFA Super Cup for the Community Shield to kick off the season and we're only 10-1 to to retain our Premier League title but SMS is the first Everton player to make it into the Media Dream 11 in this safe. We opened the season with a bit of a damp squib as the game with Manchester City ended 0-0 and a penalty shootout would decide it with James Garner's penalty being saved by Edison. In the FA Cup we progressed through the first couple of rounds with wins against Tranmere and Hull City before dispatching Arsenal comfortably at home in the fifth round. This set up a quarter-final tie against Southampton at St Mary's and they raced out to a 2-0 lead. As we were trying to come back into the game, SMS received his marching orders for a horror tackle before DCL added a goal, but it was a case of too little, too late. In the Champions League, we got off to a great start after being drawn alongside Real Sociedad, Genk, Porto, Bayern, Red Star Belgrade, CFR Cluj, Roma and PSG in the league phase. We somehow managed to go unbeaten in the league phase, which saw us finish second in the table and progress to the round of 16. This saw us take a trip to Italy to take on Inter Milan, where we opened the scoring in the first leg as McNeil was able to pick out DCL in the box for him to apply the finish. Inter pulled a goal back through Fatezi, but we responded immediately with two goals of our own. Nicola Barella pulled another goal back for Inter, but I was confident taking this lead back to Liverpool. In the second leg, DCL turned provider for McNeil, who made it 4-2 on aggregate, before Mattia Zacchiani pulled a goal back for Inter, but they didn't look like scoring again for the rest of the game to see us move into the quarter-finals, where we will face English opposition in Manchester City. And in the first leg at Bramley Moor, despite taking the lead in the game twice, we received the Haaland treatment as the big man provided two goals and an assist in the game to see City win 3-2 on the night. In the second leg, a lovely free kick routine saw us pull level in the tie as Mohamed Diamande fired home, but we were then undone by a set piece as no one was marking Rodri, who leapt highest from a corner to send Manchester City into the semis and send us home. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom this season. In the EFL Cup, we progressed through the early rounds, dispatching Plymouth, Southampton and Reading to set up a two-legged semi-final tie against West Ham. We actually lost the first leg at home thanks to this Gabriel Moscato solo run and strike, but at the London Stadium, we were a different animal with four goals going in from us with four different goal scorers to win the tie 4-3 on aggregate and progress to the final. This would be our second Carabao Cup final in four seasons and it would be a repeat of the 2023-2024 season where we took on Arsenal. We won that game a couple of seasons ago and we'd win this one as well with Anthony Martial netting the only goal of the game in the 110th minute. And in the Premier League, we opened the season with a remarkable run going into January with our only loss in the first half of the season annoyingly occurring at Anfield. We didn't actually have one player fighting it out for the golden boot, but DCL, McNeil and Lukaku combined for 46 Premier League goals. Towards the end of the season, we did have a little bit of a wobble, but returned the favour against Liverpool, picking up three points at home on the way to back-to-back -to -back Premier League titles, pipping City to it by just two points. We added another two trophies to this rapidly expanding trophy cabinet, and we have another £74 million to spend going into Season 5, but I just want to give some game time to our own new gen, Harry Sharp, who came through our very first youth intake. In this final summer, limited moves happened in the window with our key outgoings being Ben Johnson who joined Leeds United for £24 million. On the incoming side of things, we spent some money to improve at the back, securing the services of Antonio Silva from Benfica for £55 million and Mika Marmol from Real Madrid for £45 million. 
Both of these signings do come straight into our best 11, but Lukaku will be returning to Saudi Arabia, this time joining Al Hilal on a free transfer. So we will be pinning Sharp into the advanced forward spot for the season to see how he develops. We will compete in the same competitions as last season, opening with the Community Shield against Southampton. If you are still watching this video right now, I want to say thank you very much to you guys. But also, let me know that you are still here by commenting in your best Hamas Rodriguez impression up the toffees in the comment section down below. We kicked off the season with the Community Shield at Wembley, where we left it late, but a flurry of late goals saw us win the game 3-0. The FA Cup wasn't as successful as we knocked out Hull in the third round following a replay before losing to Leicester in the fourth round. In our defence of the EFL Cup, we knocked out Southampton and Bolton in the earlier rounds to set up a quarter-final tie with Nottingham Forest. We left it very late in this game, with Leonardo Lello popping up with a 93rd minute goal to see us progress to the semis. This is where we came up against Chelsea over two legs, and we even took the lead in the first leg through new gen Christian Merisseur, but were reduced to 10 men just before half-time as Bovey was shown a straight red card for his challenge on Christopher Nkunku. The extra man really saw Chelsea get on top, rattling in three goals after the red to win the game 3-1. However, in the second leg, with 11 men on the field, our quality shone through, bagging four goals on the night to win the tie 5-3 on aggregate. This set up yet another final appearance where we would take on Arsenal for a third time in five seasons. Having won the two previous ties, I was confident especially as we took the lead in this game through Frank Kessie. However, the Gunners battled back with three late goals from Smith Rowe, Osimhen and Havertz to lift the trophy. In the Champions League, we were drawn to face Nice, Porto, RB Leipzig, FCSB, Lazio, Inter, Sevilla and Servette in the league phase. We almost went flawless here, only dropping points away to Sevilla to finish third in the league table with 22 points, level with PSG, and Real Madrid, so we're in pretty good company. In the round of 16, we faced Galatasaray and were on the road first and took the lead through new gen Harry Sharp, but his goal was cancelled out by Gala after some poor goalkeeping from Jordan Pickford. But back at home, we are a very different animal, running out 3-1 winners on the night to win the tie 4-2 on aggregate. This set up a quarter-final tie against Manchester United, where the first game would be at Old Trafford. The boys showed no sign of stage fright in this one as they dominated United from start to finish, bagging three first-half goals on the way to a 3-0 win. And things were pretty similar in the second leg as new gen Emiliano Rodriguez banged a brace to see us move into the semi-finals with a 5-1 aggregate win. In the semis, we were drawn alongside Italian giants AC Milan and we were going to play at the San Siro first. Charles de Quetier opened the scoring, but Mika Marmo was able to pull us level. I thought we'd be escaping the first leg with a draw, but Florian Wirtz popped up in the 90th minute with a long-range strike. Milan extended their lead early in the second leg from a corner, but we battled back with an own goal and a tap-in from Sharp. I thought the game was destined for extra time, but that man Wirtz popped up again, even later this time, scoring a 94th minute winner to break our hearts and send Milan onto the Champions League final. And finally, in the Premier League, we started the season with five wins on the spin, but then had a little bit of a wobble through September and October before getting things back on track to end the year. This season was a real coming-of-age season for youngster Harry Sharp, as he finished second in the Golden Boot race behind Haaland, on the way to bagging 29 goals in all competitions this season. After January, our form was a little bit patchy until we put together a run of eight consecutive wins to close out the season, including wins against Manchester City, Newcastle, Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool at home on the final day of the season. That run saw us crowned champions of the Premier League for a third successive season, allowing me to call this rebuild a success. And if you want to get your hands on this save files, they are over on my Patreon right now. And if you do like the rebuild content, check out this playlist popping up right now.